lesson number five, kinematic formulas, A. And we're going to look at a number of different kinematic formulas. Now that we've discussed what velocity is, what speed is, what acceleration is on a basic level, and looked at some of the ideas involved uh, with uh, the graphing and so on, we want to derive the formulas for you. And so what we'll do is we'll take a look at velocity time graph. All right, This particular one uh, is one that we're familiar with from previous examples. When you take the slope of a velocity time graph, what do you get? Well, you should know that you get acceleration. The slope formula is rise over run, or in other words, slope is equal to the acceleration. Acceleration is equal to the rise over the run. And the rise of the run, of course, can be shown in a number of different ways, but it basically you uh, use your ordered pairs and so on. The rise over the run is equal to the change in velocity, which is the rise, over the change in time, which is the run. And when we put this uh, by definition, change is final minus initial. All right, anything you, uh, anything that changes can be determined by taking the final state and comparing it to the initial state. For example, if you get a raise at work from, let's say, $12 an hour up to $15 an hour, then, of course, your change in pay is your final, which is now 15, minus your initial, which was 12. And, of course, 15 minus 12 is, is a change of 3. So we can use that definition of change to come up with this formula, that acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity over time. Or in other words, the change in velocity over the change in time. Quite often, not always, but quite often in, with time, we don't know, uh, there's not an initial time and a final time, but just the time that's elapsed, like using a stopwatch. Since the initial time is zero, then whatever t is afterwards, that's our change in time. But you have to be careful with that sometimes. So acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. All right, The rate of change of anything is usually something over time. Your rate of pay is how many dollars you get over the time that's elapsed. And of course, this is your first equation. A is equal to Vf minus Vi over t um, is your first equation for accelerated motion. You will be getting a number of different equations that you use in uh, problem solving situations in Physics 20, uh, 30 prep here, and uh, going on to Physics 30, and even in your, your uh, post-secondary courses. You'll always be given a number of formulas on a sheet or a data booklet. You don't have to memorize these, but you should become very familiar with them. So. With that first equation, um, this is the first of four expressions or formulas you'll use in kinematics, the study of motion. And the best way to learn how to use these is to apply them in a problem-solving situation. And you'll be given an extensive practice assignment after the eighth lesson, all right? So we're going to introduce a number of formulas, and then you'll be given lots of uh, practice to work on. And there's, there are some quizzes and so on that you can uh, use to assess yourself before you write any exams. Um, this first example is quite an easy one. All right? It doesn't involve any formula manipulation. It doesn't involve anything really that difficult other than substitution and understanding what it is that you're reading. So here's a cyclist. A cyclist accelerated uniformly from rest. Now, what does that mean, rest? Well, rest means you're not moving. And that means that the cyclist's initial velocity must have been zero. And so all of a, all, already you know that vi is equal to zero. So that you would substitute into that top formula. The next one, 6.8 meters per second, well, that is your final velocity. So you know your initial is zero. You know your final is 6.8. And of course, it took how long? It took four seconds. So what you need to do is take this um, formula and use the information. And I'll give you a quick uh, example of that. 
So knowing that the initial velocity is, is zero, you would substitute zero right here. And knowing that the final velocity is 6.8, you would put 6.8 here. And of course, knowing that time was four seconds, you would put four seconds here. And then of course, you would take those values and substitute them, and you should get something close to 1.7 meters per second squared as your answer. So that's a fairly straightforward little problem. All right, the next one is a little more of a challenge. In this problem, what you'll have to do is you'll have to solve or manipulate the formula for the unknown. And in this case, the formula or the uh, problem is uh, that a car was uniformly from rest at a particular uh, rate of acceleration. The final speed was 3.0, or sorry, was 30 meters per second. What was the acceleration time? Now, in order to do this problem, because you are not given um, Vf and Vi and T and just substitute that in to get A like you did on the first equation, uh, you need to manipulate this formula and solve for T. And I've shown you the manipulation, uh, the standard formula on the left and then the manipulated version on the right. What I did was I multiplied both sides by T and divided both sides by A. And uh, in this case then, once you know that the uh, initial speed was zero, the final speed was 30 meters per second, the acceleration was 5. When you substitute those into this equation again, you get an answer that is very close to 8.00 seconds. So that was the acceleration time. All right, so uh, you'll get lots of practice on these, but there's a simple example. Uh, formula manipulation is a, a useful tool in doing these. In this final example, using this formula, uh, we'll again have to manipulate the formula for the unknown. In this case, the unknown is going to be Vf. And of course, uh, what I'll do is I'll give you the initial velocity, I'll give you the acceleration and the time, and I'll say, all right, you're going at a certain speed, you accelerate at a certain rate for a certain period of time, and what is your final velocity? So example number three, a train was accelerated from rest. Of course, that means that the initial velocity was zero at a rate of 1.25 meters per second squared for a period of 18 seconds. So here's a train starting from rest, pulling away from the station uh, at a fairly slow rate of 1.25. For 18 seconds, what's the final speed of the train? So 0 plus 1.25 times 18 will give you an answer of very close to 22.5 meters per second. So that should work. Uh, these are uh, this example, you should take a look at it, try it on your own, and also see if you can work out this substitution. Start with this formula and see if you can manipulate that in order to get uh, solved. It involves a number of steps. The first step would be multiply both sides by t. That removes the t from the bottom uh, of the right hand side and moves it to the top of the left. Then, in order to solve for Vf, you'd need to move that negative Vi from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. It would become a positive Vi. And so you end up with uh, At plus Vi equals Vf, or that's exactly what this says in a slightly different way, but basically the same thing. So there's a few examples that you need to uh, work on. You'll have lots like this in the problem set that's assigned uh, shortly. All right, once you've gone through a number of these equations, then we'll assign practice on all of them.